Welcome to Soul Charge. This evening we have with us Reverend Oscar Evans, and he will be sharing with us information on how to study the Bible. Welcome to Soul Charge. You need to fix up. And then the second thing about it was God needed him to, to go. He needed him to go and do something for him. And he needed somebody to go for him. So he says, then said I hear my Lord send me. And so in verse nine, he gets his calling. And so Isaiah opens his mouth and he goes and he tells the people, hear ye indeed, but understand not, see ye indeed, but perceive not. You can go on and read the rest of the chapter. But that's pretty much what it, what it says. So again, as we read the passage, we saw the different things in the text. What does the text teach me about God? What did we learn about God? Did we learn something about God tonight? When we read that particular passage, did you learn something about God? Did you learn something about, about Jesus? You know, uh, what do you learn about him? What does the text teach you about Jesus? Because Jesus is God's son. And we live, we don't live in the Old Testament, but we live in the New Testament. In the New Testament, the Bible says things, like I said before, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. That's the tongue off the altar that will clean us up. So we have the satisfying sacrifice of Jesus Christ who will cleanse us from all unrighteousness if we confess our sins. And so uh, also what does the text teach us about sinful humanity that, that we've all sinned and come short of the glory. Isaiah doesn't say y'all sin. He says, I, he says, the people who I live with, those people are sinful. They curse a lot. No, he started with himself. He says, woe is me. First of all, first and foremost, I'm, I'm unclean. He says, and then I know I'm unclean. And I know the type of people who I live with. I walked outside yesterday on, on a conversation and some guys was outside talking. And man, I tell you, I said, boy, I remember a day I could get in that conversation, but I kept, I just, I didn't even stop because some of the stuff that was being said out there in that particular conversation, I knew I didn't need to be a part of. I just let them brothers, they waved at me. They said, hey, Oscar. I said, hey, man, good to see y'all, man. Y'all y'all keep on keeping on. And, uh, but, you know, uh, I, I remember sometimes I, I I would be in that conversation. I didn't stop and just judge them or anything like that. But I just said, man, I just said to myself, I said, boy, I remember a time I would have I would have been in that conversation. But now I know how to keep keep it moving and keep on going uh, and not not stay there. And then finally, what does the text need you to do? That God needs us to do something. He needs each he some, needs something from each and every one of us. What does God want you to do? And sometimes it takes courage to do what God wants you to do. So what does the text want you to do? That's the, those are the four questions that you always want to ask of any uh, particular passage as you read it. So uh, we're at the 7.20, two minutes over. So we have about three minutes. It, are there anybody, does anybody have any questions or anything that you need to, uh, that you need to understand more? I'll give you that, I'll open the floor for that. Hello. Oscar, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Um, can you bring that scripture back? I'm sorry, I was late. But that last scripture that you were reading, I did not understand the second part of that. Which but one? Uh, I'm going to tell this people, hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. What? I mean... Yeah, it, actually, uh, what he's, he's about to do, and I'm just, I just actually, you, if you go and read all of it in, in context, he's bas basically saying that there's some, he say, you, you're hearing, but you, you're really not understanding. Oh, there you go. Okay. But you, yeah, but you're not. This is the King, New King James Version, so sometimes you have to read in, a, in another version, but um, this is, uh, Jesus actually quotes this particular passage at, at, at one point in time when he's actually dealing with the Pharisees. He quoted it quite a bit uh, in the New Testament. But he said that, you know, there are some people, you know, you know, some people can hear stuff, but they just, they just don't understand. It goes in one ear and out the other mm -hmm. kind of scenario. So that's, that's pretty much what he's talking about. A lot of people can hear, but they just don't understand. And they, they can see stuff, but they just don't perceive. They can be right there in their faces and they just don't get it. Yeah, because I read that, I was thinking he's sending, he wants to be sent, but he doesn't understand what he's supposed to be doing. So why would he even go there? Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. yeah, see, so so the thing is, this now really, this is God telling Isaiah what he needs to go and do. Mm -hmm. he needs, you need to go tell this people 
that you, you're hearing, but you're not understanding. Because in, like I said, in, in right. verses one through five, I mean, excuse me, chapters one through five, he's actually been telling them about, you know, the reason you are in the shape that you're in right now is because of some of the things that you've done. He, he talks about, I'll tell you something, in chapter one, he talks about, he said, you've prostituted yourselves. He said, you sold yourself to the highest bidder. You know, I used to take care of you. You don't even recognize the care that I've given you down through the years. You don't even recognize that I am the one who's brought you to where you are now. Uh, and so he, he try, he's trying to get them to understand some things that they need to understand. And Isaiah has been a part of that conversation for five chapters. But when you get in chapter six, it's only when he gets to chapter six, when his uncle dies, now, you know, he starts seeing things the way he really ought to see it. He has some glimpses of it, mm -hmm. uh, but he didn't really truly understand what it was he was actually seeing. I mm -hmm. think that many of us can testify to that point that uh, Paul says we, we see now, but through a glass is kind of dim. We don't see it all clearly right now, but one day we're going to clearly see it face to face. And as we grow, you know, that the expression hindsight is 2020. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did somebody else have something to say? I saw somebody with a hand up or something. Mike's muted. Okay. So that's, that's for the night. Uh, we'll get into some more. Uh, I really want to get into some more of the application because uh, that's the most important part of understanding by when you read the Bible, James says, you don't want to be, go look at the Bible and be like a, looking in a mirror and you see things that are wrong and out of place and you don't fix what's wrong with, with yourself. And so uh, he says, you want to be not just hearers only, but you want to be doers of the word. And so we'll talk more about application uh, on the next time we meet. These are some of the interpretive things. And, uh, and then we'll be, uh, almost through with uh, this session of how to study the Bible. If you want to get more information, you want to see some of the other videos, you want to go back, you can go to soulcharge.net and uh, there are postings of the first three classes uh, that are out there. You can go out there and you can and play them back. And if there's something that you missed, uh, you can actually go back and uh, be a part of that and see what, what's going on. So you can get caught up and come up to speed. There are also some handouts uh, and stuff that you can get as well uh, that are available on the uh, site. Okay. So thank you for your time. It is 7.31. I, did, I, I try to stay within the 30-minute time. Uh, thank you all for joining. I uh, hope you hope you enjoying the study. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing you the next time. We can bow our heads for a word of prayer. Uh, Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for again for this opportunity to uh, come before you. Uh, we thank you, God, that you spared us again um, uh, from another storm in this area, uh, and you did not allow a uh, hurricane or a tropical storm, depression, whatever you call it, beta, uh, to do much damage to us and, and the property, and that God will recover from it. And we thank you, God, for the peace and calm that's in the tropics right now. And we thank you, God, that you, uh, that hopefully the season is, is ended, and that God, that look forward to another fall season. We pray, Lord, for those who were affected, that you would uh, restore them to a, a place of wholeness. Uh, we thank you, God, for those who have participated with us tonight, and we continue to pray for our brothers and sisters in Lake Charles and, and for all the things that are going on in our world. We know we need you right now. Those who are dealing with the fires on the West Coast and all the other things that are going on with our climate, we ask, God, that you would just do what only you can do. Uh, we just thank you for, for, for your word, and we pray, Lord, you'd help us to know what it is you'd have us do as a result of it. Uh, and forgive us for the sins that we've committed against you and that you help us to be the people you've called us to be. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next time.